Welcome into the lounge presented by DraftKings. We have the pleasure of sitting down with Justin Matabike. And Justin, should I intro you as a D tackle or an edge now? You know, <laughs> you're, you're you're pass rush on point from that edge. Yeah, um, I just say D lineman, like anywhere on the on the line, nose tackle, and yeah, wherever Michael wants to put me at, I think I can get to work honestly yeah, well you are you're yeah. feasting this year That's already right. uh on pace for double digit sacks already mm-hmm. and uh i do kind of want to start there it's just been you know obviously a big game against the titans in london mm-hmm. and it's been fun to watch your tape man like you you were eating over there I, it was fish and chips just all day <laughs> 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 yeah. what is it that you feel like is has really gotten you off to this hot start um i think just like the work i put in the off season and also just being in good team like chemistry with just the outside linebackers and the defensive tackles being on the same point in terms of like games and stuff yep. like that and then believing in me as well just I feel like it's helped me flourish and stuff like that but um you know I just always feel like nothing's like good enough I can always get better like on the edge and stuff like that I'm asking Dolphy for pointers job mm. for pointers that's cool you know what I'm saying Cause I'm not accustomed to playing that position yeah so I'm just trying to just get better in every like place i'm in the d-line really yeah. yeah so he the point in terms of you being on the edge you got a sack from the edge spot in this yeah. game yeah. and so they're moving you all over the place mm-hmm. like what was your when, when they said all right we're gonna try this thing out we're gonna put you at the edge spot here for a you know a play or a series of plays well he's been doing the, it's yeah this really, wasn't the first time you know you did it last game yeah too, I, think I, did so. it, I did it in uh, the texans game too yeah, well, yeah when yeah, they yeah. first came to you and they were like all right we're gonna just try this out and put you here in that spot you'll be up against kind of the tackle in this role like yeah. what did you think um it wasn't something that i've done for the first time like in college i did that too okay. i just didn't get like a lot of sacks on the edge in college like they're more like a contained rush you know what i'm saying like uh, like fall back if you're uh, past the quarterback and stuff like that but uh now i think it's fun because it's something that i haven't done like it's, it's not my first time doing it and yeah. i feel like more like more confident like all oh, my boys are giving me pointers and stuff like that like angles and stuff on the edge is really about angles when that tight ends there i'm just like this guy's about to chip the freaking hell out of me I'm, just, <laughs> like, I'm not trying to go for that so yeah i feel like i'm getting more confident as it, as it goes on mm-hmm. it, it looked uh, like on that sack you kind of gave him like a little hezzy and then power yeah right? yeah talk about break down that sack. yeah it's like. funny like when we were on the plane back rock on was just laughing like big you're so funny i was like what's so funny he's like this dude right here tried to fake speed and just went straight power and he was just laughing like the way it looked but yeah i was just i was on the edge and i like uh if you really see the play like i was supposed to be a three but kyle he pushed me out there he's like no just rushing it i was like all right bet and i'm just like oh, <laughs> what am i gonna do because i had a plan for the guard yeah, yeah and okay. i just and i came off the ball late so i was just like i just stuttered and i got him and i was like all right but that, that works so right that's right. something i can add to my arsenal so now yeah. now the the sack uh celebration i've been noticing has just been the, the classic the flex are, yeah are you working on are you workshopping anything <laughs> yeah kind of me, more yeah different? you know what, yeah it means i were just talking about that and uh, he's like bro you need to make something better i'm just like yeah no i'm just trying to think of it uh, he's like no okay i'm okay don't worry about it i was like that's at least your word just keep on but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 you know i need to definitely make something but flex is just so natural like i just get up and just like yeah yeah well wouldn't well, you with, like, with I'm power power right like that, it's boom, it's yeah. power. Yeah, yes, sir. Well, you're getting so many sacks now, right? four and a yeah. half this year so yeah. far. So, like, you, you kind of need to mix it up, right? I mean, it's yeah. like, it's you get the flex works if you're getting a few of them. Now you're getting so many of them, you're on page one. <laughs> I need to, digits, I need so to like, get, okay, keep, keep it fresh. You got to keep it fresh. Yeah, I'm, a th- I'm, I'm thinking something. It's going to be clean. I'm thinking <laughs> trust, trust, trust. It's going to be clean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, now, so, like, in terms of, like, just the, I want to stick on that pass rush a little bit because it's been impressive just to see the way that you have developed yeah. in that regard like right. and i remember even when the ravens first drafted you like that was an element of your game and it's just like what stands out to me it's really you as a player overall but i think it really shows in the pass rush department like you've just gotten better every year like yeah. you just continue to improve every single season and we're and we're seeing that again this season yeah. why do you think that is and and what is it about your ability as a pass rusher that has kind of gone to another level this year um it's a good question i'd say like i think it's like my inner hunger just to get better. Like my inner like willingness to like call Justin Houston or call even Chuck or any of these guys that I know are really, really good at what they do when it turns to pass rush. Like to ask questions, ask detailed questions, write notes down. Like I'm doing all that. Like I'm putting pride to the side, calling up whoever I know that can get me better. I'm asking silly questions, real questions. Like I'm not afraid to ask a dumb question. I'm just trying to find a way to just to get better. I feel like that's first. I feel like that's just the internal. And then the external is me just like obviously getting right with Scott in the weight room. Um, you know what I mean? Tuning up things in terms of pass rush, in terms of like on 
the dots outside in the field. So I feel like all that comes together and you just get good product when it comes to Sundays. So, so you called Justin Houston. Who, who are the guys that you've called? And, and I kind of want to hear an example of, of the questions that you're asking, including the dumb questions. I'm kind of curious. Uh, not lie. Someone who knows a thing or two about dumb questions. <laughs> dumb questions. <laughs> hey, yo, exactly. very funny. Hey. <laughs> hey, you funny. I can give you some tips on that. Hey, right, you funny. Um, I can't really think on top of my head the dumb question I asked, but um, I don't know. Like, I'll be like, hey, Justin, bro, when you're like trying to – like. Snatch him and rip. Like, do you worry about your, your like your knee collapse and stuff? Like, I'll just ask like, yeah. mm. like, like questions like that because I'm okay. I'm a heavier guy. So like, mm. you know, what I mean, I, I got to make sure like I'm on point when it comes to my angles and stuff. Like, he's like, nah, yeah. bro, don't worry about that, bro. Just maybe, like you bring him to your pocket. Like when you snatch him, bring him to like your pocket. Right. So he's gonna be right here, so you can be clear. Mm. So just stuff like that. I'm just like trying to like not not only take notes of it, remember it, and actually apply it in practice. When yeah. I apply it in practice and it works in practice, I have more confidence when it comes to game day. That's cool. And, you, and it's you cool that you Justin yeah. Houston now, like this season you're talking to Justin Yeah, Houston I still? texted him like like three weeks ago. I was like, hey man, what do you eat before the game? Like to give you the, be- the best feel. He's like, uh, night games or like, Noon games, and he gave me like categories and all that stuff. Like, I'm writing this down, I'm sending it to the Duffy too. I'm like, bro, we're like, we're trying to feast, man. Like, this is our year, I just feel it, you know what I mean? But it's just one day at a time, and just being able to be, be willing to just ask questions, be hungry, and just be steadfast, really. Do you, um, do you still talk to Calais at all? I know he was a big mentor for you. I called Calais, no, Calais called me, I didn't answer, but I called him back a week ago, so yeah, we still keep in touch. I want to talk like all the time, like when he was here, yeah. But, uh, I just, I just saw him get his 100 sack. Yep. I know he has That's everybody in the ask. world in him up right now i'm gonna wait a little bit like hey bro i've seen that congrats you know what i'm saying but yeah. um yeah he's definitely a guy that you know i mean i asked a lot of questions as well yeah him, so one thing i want to ask you about is mike mcdonald and is in his defense especially up front it seems like he does run games and stunts with like everybody you know like yeah. mike pierce gets you know they're clearing out defenders for michael pierce the nose tackle you don't usually see that yeah. how how does that affect the mindset of defensive linemen when you know mike's going to scheme up everybody to get their shots you know yeah um mike is real really good at what he does like we were talking about this the other day he's like a wizard when it comes to just defensive schemes and just putting us in positions to be successful and just uh he got mike cutting loose me cutting loose doff cutting loose everybody mm-hmm. cutting loose and just uh everybody doing their 111th everybody doing their job is what makes it work yeah you know what i mean it's not just him calling it's him calling and everybody being on the same page right executing like to a t so For sure mike's really really good at that so i'm curious how it helps like the thing that's unique in some regards about your defense in terms of the pass rush is that it can be a different guy every game like mm-hmm. and there's not one dominant player who's getting after the quarterback some teams have the guy and it's like all right this guy's going to get 10 plus sacks you know the browns are kind of that way well, he's I was for 10 plus sacks. well but there's a couple guys there's a couple guys <laughs> yeah, who can get guys, it yeah. you know yeah yeah and, too, I think, yeah, yeah clowny yeah. is Clown yeah so like up. it can be a different guy every game how does that help you as a player um i don't really worry about it really to be honest with you like gary like i just i just do my i just do my job um and I feel like if I do my job and work my, my ass off on like on the field and just stay on point, I feel like they'll come to you. Yeah, you know, like and on the sideline, you could be at halftime with zero sacks and be like, "Oh, what was me? Like, yeah, I, I need the ball." But no, nah, I'm just like, get like your banana, get your oranges, and and halftime, get some good energy and just come out like on fire. Just do your job, and then like when you win, like when you get a one on one, win. Yeah, and when you win, like make sure you tackle that quarterback, bring him down. And then you're gonna be happy. You know, yeah. it'll be a good day. Mm-hmm. Now I, I know there's a lot of talk, obviously, about about contracts, and the, you're in a contract year now, and that was yeah. the talking point going into the year. And you said then, I'm not even thinking about that, right? Yeah. I mean that to me, I'm like, wow, that that really shows this guy's maturity, right? Like sure, that sure. that's that's a tough thing to do when you're young and and that's on the horizon, mm-hmm. right? To just totally be like, I'm not thinking about that. How how do you go about doing that? How difficult is that to be to to kind of lock that out? It's the same thing, honestly. Yeah, the same thing. Like, <clears throat> I'm not gonna be the first, and I'm not gonna be the last player that been through like the contract year or whatever like that. Right. And that's just how I see. It. I just see it as just what it is, and it's just like you can worry about it and let it kind of stress you. You can put your energy towards that, or you can put your energy towards just like getting better. And your teammates having a good vibe, but also being focused, being a leader by example, and speak when you need to speak. And when you speak, you know what I mean? They'll mm-hmm. feel you, they'll understand you because, you know what I mean? They respect you, they respect that you come in and you work your ass off every single day and you're right. putting in good product on, on Sunday. So that's just been my mentality. And also talking to like guys like Clay stuff like, how did he deal with that? Like, bro, mm. just ball, bro, don't be, just do the same thing. Right. Even Jamil, he, he played here, he said, yep. just do the same thing. Keep doing the same thing, don't worry about all that. 
Yeah, yeah. And that's what I've been doing. Things were working, so that's it, cool. It's yeah. interesting because like every guy has a different approach in that regard. Like I, rem- <laughs> I remember Zadarius Smith when he was here and he was in a contract year. He was basically just telling everybody like, "Yeah, I'm trying to ball out and get paid." Like he was like, <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, it's my contract year. I'm trying to ball out and go get paid." Yeah. And like you kind of have taken the approach of, of of the opposite in that you're not really focused on the contract year. I'm just curious why that is because again, everybody has like different approaches there yeah. and like it does not seem like it's necessarily the motivating factor for you um i'm sure there's some motivation obviously but like right. but why have you taken the approach that you have uh you know my the way my brain is programmed it's like even in college i was like if you're trying to get paid you're trying to get paid like if if you play if i if me personally if i play like that i feel like i mess up mm, more. okay mm-hmm. but if i think like no, nah, don't worry about getting paid. Just worry about just like doing your job and just having like high energy and just flying around to the ball. Then I make like more plays. Mm-hmm. And like when I, when you know, and as you grow older, you just find ways to know yourself, know what best foods to eat, how well you rest and stuff like that, sleep, and just like how you think. And I just recognize that I'm like, when I think about getting paid, da, 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 it don't work for me. But when I think about just being a freaking monster and just being great, all that's gonna come. Mm-hmm. So. I was like, just be great, do your job, be a positive influence, like on the team and everybody, and like all that comes in this in the work. I was like, oh wow, that's that's what's up. I'm gonna keep doing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's working. Yeah, exactly, and so it's working. That's just, that's, uh, that's just what it is, honestly. Yeah. Now this defense, I mean, we've had a good defense for several years now. Yeah. What is it about this year's defense? You know, we've lost guys like Calais and like Justin Houston, and yet you know here we are, another year, another great defense. What is it about this year's unit that you think makes you guys really, really special? Um, like I'm just thinking about we have great players, man. Like uh, Marlo, Roquan, PQ, Kyle, Marcus, Dafe, myself, like Jabo, Mike, or I mean, yeah. guys I name like freaking just monsters. Stacked. They're right. just stacked. They're just <laughs> yeah. stacked from, like young to like OGs too, and it's yeah. like all coming together. And we all have a great vibe as a defense, and I just feel like when we have each other's back, when we love each other for real, like we hang out like outside of the field and just outside of the building like you go in on Sunday like we're going to war and I love you bro and I'm ready to just take somebody's head off for you bro and that's <laughs> right. just what it is and I, I just feel that you feel it it's yeah. something that you just know you feel it and when you feel it like just the rocket just takes off man mm-hmm. well, well part of it's that, that 2020 draft class you know I mean you guys are all playing a huge role now I yeah. mean PQ yeah. you Malik Gino Brody Brody, yeah. I mean, like all five guys are playing key roles. What What's the dynamic amongst you? You know, who all came into this league together? Yeah. You know, how kind of bonded are you, and how cool <clears throat> is it to see you all now really thriving? You know, uh, the bond is there, one hundred percent. You know, we all came in in the crazy COVID year, yep. no fans, no reporters, or nothing. I'm like, oh, this is the NFL. Like, obviously, we know <laughs> it's, it's got messed up. Right? Yeah, it's kind of crazy, <laughs> but you know, just uh, just working in the off season together, keeping in touch with each other. Um, and just cool to see it now all coming into, um, you know, in motion in a yeah. sense of just like Gino, uh, making picks, PQ, smacking folks, me doing my, my thing, Brody sitting the edge and, and effing people up, man. It's just, <laughs> it's just great to see. And I'm just great to be, I'm just grateful to be a part of it really. Yeah. And they're, and they're great guys too. So it's awesome to be around them in the, in the building. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. How much uh, do you view yourself as a tone setter on the field? Like you play, you play to the whistle, yeah. And uh, you bring an attitude and an edge. And you talked about like yeah, how your mindset is just to play with uh, that energy. Yeah. Like, is that something that you view as really important? Very important. Yeah. Um, even though like I'm not like super, super, super like vocal, vocal guy, I feel like my my energy, my presence, like is felt and like it brings like energy to the defense, like especially like guys like Roquan, all that stuff, like for sure. But I feel like I have that too, like in a sense of like uh, when I make plays or when I have like energy on the sideline, people feed off of that, and people like need like I need your bro to bring that energy. So I'm definitely here, you know what I'm saying, to do that. You know what I mean by taking care of myself, taking care of my diet, taking care of my sleep. You know what I'm saying, just having the right mind frame before I go out there. Yeah, this. The game. Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, this is a good test for your for your defense this week. Yeah. Detroit Lions, you know they're one of the best offenses. Mm-hmm. They're one of the best teams in the yeah. league. What are you, what's the thought process? I mean, on paper, this is the best offense that you faced this yeah. season, and you know, it's not particularly close. Um, you know, early part of the year. But what are your thoughts about going up against this team, and, and you know the notion that this could be a measuring stick for your team and for your defense? I ain't gonna lie, man. They're gonna have to show me. 
<laughs> they're gonna have to show me. Yeah. And that's just what it is. Like we put in too much work as a defense to like, you know, I mean, be you know, shaking or like a deer caught in headlights on the off bets offense, whatever. Like you're gonna have to show me, bro. We put in too much work. We love each other too much for somebody just to come into our stadium and try and try to do what they want to do. Like it sounds good on paper, but you know, you're gonna have to show me. Yeah, I like it. I like it, man. That's that's one thing I like about you too is like, and this whole defense row included. It's like we're not we're not backing down from anybody. Like uh, we respect people, we respect you. Yeah. But like we ain't gonna sit here and kowtow. We're not gonna bow down to you before a game. You know. Not one percent. No. <laughs> no, for real. I'm saying if I'm being serious. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Just, yeah, it's just, yeah it's totally. just, it's just what it is. We just put in too much work. We love each other too much. We focus on the details too much for somebody just to run all over the place and, and and even if they happen to uh get their their way we're gonna recalculate our steps and find a way to bring it back at them so yeah that's what it is i kind of get the feeling like they haven't played many close games mm -hmm. uh yet this season especially mm -hmm. recently and i just have i just got this gut feeling like they're gonna get in a, they're, they're gonna be in a war and mm -hmm. they're gonna like know it they're gonna feel that they're in a war most teams do when they bank. Go against this defense yeah <laughs> it's, it's, yeah I, i'm excited about it Absolutely. my la my last question for you justin is your, your mentality and your approach just you know, in football and in life, and, you know, we talked about the contract stuff and all that. How much of that is because of, of your upbringing with your parents, Nigerian immigrants, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they had to make their way, you know? Yeah, How much of it stems from that, do you think? Um, A lot, really. A lot, you know. My parents came here with nothing and just found a way to just not make excuses and to work hard and get what you believe you deserve. And that's just what yeah. it was. So even um, with my mom, she just always tells me just to work hard and be a good person. Just work hard, be a good person. Mm -hmm. Everything will all come full circle. Just keep working hard, keep being a good person and just be there for your for people that you love. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like stuff like that just helped me with my upbringing in terms of hard work and just being a good guy and, um, you know. I feel like when you're a good guy, people ready to, to that, and they want to be around you, and they want to help you. So I feel like that's where I am today because of that. Cool. Awesome. All right. awesome. Well, well, keep it up, man. Yes, You've been sir. balling this season, and yes, uh, I look forward to seeing you continue that the rest of the way. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. you. All right, thanks, man. Well, welcome back into the Seat Geek Studio. Really enjoyed the conversation with Justin Matabike. Also, we want to give a shout out to our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook, which is an official sports betting partner of the Baltimore Ravens. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Use the promo code FLOCK. If you're a new customer, you can get a new customer bonus up to $1,000. Again, the promo code is FLOCK at DraftKings. For help, visit mdgamblinghelp.org or call 1-800-GAMBLER. you got to be over 21 and physically present in Maryland to play. So, uh, great conversation with uh, Matt Abike. You know, I said on Monday, or on Tuesday when we did the, uh, the film breakdown, you know, Brink's truck is, is getting ready to back yeah. up for him. And I think that he's going to keep it rolling. I think that he's going to... I just think that when the season's done, we're going to be really impressed with what he's able to do. He's going to have great stats. He's going to have a big payday. And he's going to be a really important piece of this defense. And I, I, I love his approach because I think he does a lot of things behind the scenes that don't get seen, whether it's diet or sleep, like Texting he mentioned. different guys. Yeah. I, mean, that, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, like hearing from other players. He, like when Calais was here and Matt Abike was, you know, a rookie second-year player, like he was he was following him around everywhere. He was his yeah. shadow, like yep. take, soaking up as much information well, as he could. Calais Campbell would constantly say, like, I am always in Justin's ear telling yep. him, like, how good you can be just from an athletic standpoint. And then you see the work ethic and the, all he does behind the scenes to really maximize that athletic ability that he has like kind of the, you know it's cliche but sky's the limit for that guy you know he has all the ability in the world well it's kind of like when he first got here that was kind of the 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 talking point it was like this guy could be really good he could be really good yeah. and he's just gotten better every single season and i think he's i think he's putting it all together yeah this year and um yeah, I, I, I'm thrilled by what he's been able to do. We talked a lot about pass rush, but his run defense has been very, very good too. You know, you talk about losing a guy like Calais Campbell, who was a, a great run defender. Um, you know, and and Matabike has had to kind of step up in that regard too. And and I think the Ravens' run defense is one of the best in the league for that for that reason. In yeah. Part. Well, it's kind of interesting. The Ravens basically remade their defensive front to some level this off season on the edge with with letting Justin Houston go yep. and Jason Jason. Pierre Paul didn't come back and then you know Calais goes and so yep. now you basically are counting on some young players and some newcomers like Clowney to come in and so and they've been really good and yep. I think part of the reason they felt 
comfortable as much as you lo- would love to have Calais come back for another year. They felt comfortable with it is because they had confidence in the young guys that they had in the mix here. Yeah. And we're seeing why. Absolutely. So uh, we want to talk a little bit about this uh, upcoming big game against the Lions. Big Justin, game. Justin Matt. Big, big game. Oh, yeah. You can tell Justin Matabike is a little fired up for that one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and, and you know, kind of like I said, I, I really do like the Ravens vibes going into this because, you know, they've been hearing a lot about how they haven't played up to their potential and whatever. You should have blown these teams out and you didn't or you lost the teams that you should have blown out. And now here comes a team into your house that's 5-1. and one. They've won, what is it, 13 out of the last 16 games, right? One of the best teams in the NFC, if not the best. And it's kind of... A, all right, you know, sure, okay, we haven't blown out teams like you think we all should have. Mm -hmm. Maybe we haven't put it all together yet. Like, we're going to have to play really well against this challenge. And, like, I think that that kind of... um, that gets you going a little bit. I think it kind of reminds me a little bit a few weeks ago when they were going to play the Browns and everybody was like, Browns, number one defense, number one mm-hmm, defense, number mm-hmm, one defense. Mm-hmm. And ironically, it's kind of the other way I around. felt like the fact that everyone was talking about the Browns being the number one defense riled up the defense like more than the offense. Yeah, right? well, I, I completely agree. And, and now, so it's now you're going up against the Lions who have a great offense. Yep. And, you know, people like me all right <laughs> big point people like me are asking him like what do you think about going up against this great offense and that's been so and great team like that's a talking point around the locker room this yep. entire week like measuring stick game whatever cliche you want to throw out there yep and i think that they're like they they get motivated by stuff like that yeah and teams are always looking for ways to motivate and whatever you can use as a, as that motivation and i think that you know, they have it. I think there's definitely a little edge there. Yeah. And, you know, you've been on the road for three straight weeks. You're coming back to M&T Bank. The last time you were there, you lost kind of a stinker to the Colts. Yeah. Like, let's go. This is a good team coming into our house. We defend our turf kind of territory. Like, yeah. I just like how this is all kind of lining up Yeah. Uh, from, like, the big picture storyline and the narratives and the feeling going into the game. So I want to talk a little bit about um, – some of the more nuanced things about this game that the Ravens are going to have to do to win. And I, I think part of it, it really starts with Jared Goff and, and kind of cloud the picture there. I mean, Jared Goff's uh, one of the league leaders in, in yards so far. And really what it is, is he's only been sacked 10 times, mm-hmm. right? He's been well protected, had a clear picture. And I think that's why you, you hear from Justin Matabike. Like if they can cloud that picture, get pressure on him, they're coming off a game with six sacks. That's going to change the dynamic because Jared Goff is not, He's not a guy who extends a lot of plays. He's not a runner. He likes. He's a. He's like you playing quarterback. <laughs> he's like he's, playing he's quarterback. a statue. I'll take that. <laughs> Jared I'll, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> and so, like you know, it's play action, protect him well. And he's not like a gunslinger. He's not going to take a lot of chances. He's a make your reads, go through your reads, make the the throw that makes a lot of sense. Like he's been in the system for a while. If the Ravens can disrupt that, disrupt mm-hmm. that timing, like that's when you can really kind of get Jared Goff off his game. Well, I've always felt like a way to disrupt that timing. It's one thing to have the pressure off the edge, but but even more than that, it's right up the middle. Yep. Like, that's the problematic thing for a quarterback, really any quarterback, but I think a quarterback like Goff, who who has that good protection, has got good tackles, mm-hmm. you know, can it, it can be protected back there. But if you have a guy like uh, Justin Matabike yep. in the middle <laughs> who can force his way into the backfield and create problems, I think that that can really disrupt a, a quarterback like Goff. And so... The Ravens are going to be leaning on Matabike to have a big game. Yeah, and, and Jadavion Clowney said that's you know he, maybe he's a little biased. He's uh, you know in that front seven, but he says he feels like this game's going to come down to Ravens defensive front versus Lions offensive line. And as always, it always starts with stopping the run for the Ravens. Now, part of this game is Dave Montgomery, yeah. the Lions' leading running back so far. It looks like he's not going to play. He's injured. Jameer Gibbs, though, first round pick, speedy guy, really talented guy. To me. You can't give up any home runs to him. You know, that's kind of been the Ravens' run defense. If there's anything to nitpick them for, it's been long plays, Mm -hmm. right? And Zach Moss hit some. You know, it was like, well, you know, they did well except for these three plays, right? And then you had Derrick Henry hit the the long one against him in London, you know, and that was kind of a trick play. It was a Tajay Spears is too late. Tajay Spears, that wasn't a run, but it was a running back screen. Yeah. Um, But you can't give it. Gibbs has the speed. Gives is that kind of threat for them, and he's going to get a full workload. You can't give out any big ones up to him. I mean, you know, the, that's it's kind of interesting because Gibbs, like when I've watched the Lions play this year, like I think he's had more juice. Like I think that he's yeah. like a really dynamic running back, and they've kind of eased not as him a polished along. runner yeah. as Dave Montgomery. He's is. young. He's a rookie. He's a rookie. Yeah. You know, he's played six games, so For like sure. he's he's 
But he's he's got he's got serious juice. Yeah. He was a first round pick. He's also really good out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. That could be a, yep. a difficult thing to to handle. So he poses some serious problems. Yeah. I think. Now speed versus speed. The, I like the Ravens' defensive speed. You look at Patrick Queen, Roquan mm-hmm. Smith. Those guys can fly. Like I think Adafi Owe. You know, if the Ravens are able to get him back for this game, that really helps. He's he just practiced. A, huh, and he practiced on Wednesday in a limited capacity. I think that, you know, he's a guy that kind of can string out some of those running back screens, can get to the edge, fast dude. Um, so I think that would definitely help. But Jameer Gibbs is a, is a challenge. Yeah. And so that they have to be very careful of that. And then they have Amon Ra St. Brown, Sam Laporta, the rookie tight end. Is, I mean, it's weapons all over this offense, to be yeah, honest with you. They, they have a lot of challenging weapons. So it's, uh, again... You know, we're not going to sit here and bow down before the game even starts. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. Uh-huh. I want Matt Abik coming back in here. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it's definitely a stiff challenge for this defense. I mean, look, I'm on Ross St. Brown. I, I think he's one of the best receivers in the game. Yeah. Like, I think he, and the numbers he's back that He's a top 10 up. guy. And he's he's got great hands. He's got home run potential. He can move the chains. He makes tough catches. Like, he is going to be a difficult guy to deal with for the secondary. Yep. I I, I mean... They faced some good guys, Jamar Chase certainly, and T. Higgins. Mm-hmm. You know, with the Bengals, so they they faced some good guys. But you know, I think that this overall is the biggest test for this defense. Um, and I think that he in particular is gonna is kind of an, another level than they faced so far this year. A little wrinkle, Sam Laporta, the rookie tight end out of Iowa. It, it's I think he's gonna be the best tight end that they faced so far this season. You, you think back to the opponents the Ravens have faced so far, hasn't really been a real dominant tight end. Laporta's among the league leaders Mm -hmm. um, so far, so that'll be an interesting, different kind of new challenge for the Ravens defense. I think Kyle Hamilton I was going to say, is this the Hamilton matchup against him all day long? Wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me. You know, when you're talking about who plays that nickel, who plays in that slot, who who's defending that guy. Arthur Millette's been playing a lot of snaps, but in this matchup, it wouldn't surprise me if Kyle Hamilton gets some some Laporta matchups. Yeah, it's interesting too because Marcus Williams is dealing with a hamstring injury, so he may not play. Right. And so then you're looking at Geno Stone and who's another know, Iowa guy, Laporta and Geno. I yeah. asked Geno about that in the locker room. He said, you know, I'll see him on Sunday. <laughs> I said, I was like, I was giving him a hard time. I was like, because he said Amon Ra St. Brown's their best offensive player. Yeah. And I was like, dang, you didn't even give your other Iowa guy a little shout out. <laughs> no love for the uh, the other Hawkeye. He was like, I'll see him on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Geno's been playing really well too. Yeah. Even if yeah, Marcus Williams isn't in the game. Um then Gino, I think I feel confident in his ability to hold down that spot. 100%. And then you flip it over to the other side of the ball. Uh, the Lions have the number one run defense in the NFL, right? And the, the Ravens have one of the best run offenses in the NFL. Now, I do think that that stat could be a little bit skewed to make the Lions look a little better than they might be. Like I said, they've been on a lot of blowouts. Generally speaking, you're in a blowout. The other team's throwing the ball a lot. They're not running. So thus, your yards allowed per game in rushing is not great yep right you know you're not giving up a lot of rushing yards because guess what they're not running mm-hmm. um but still a very stout defensive front i think the ravens have to establish establish the run which then sets them up for the pass game they're they're achilles sealed they're 18th in the league in pass defense and again that might be because in part opponents are throwing against them a lot late in games to try to catch up but i think that that is kind of a little bit of where their weakness lies yeah like i'll i'll be um with this raisin ravens passing offense um, you know, I think that they've, they're still trying to put it all together as mm-hmm. they've talked about this week. And if, you know, Lamar Jackson and John Harbaugh and multiple people talked this week about how it's kind of a work in progress so far. Yep. And I think that they're going to keep making strides. I, I would like to see, you know, I thought we saw, you know, we saw the big catch and run from Odell Beckham Jr. last week. Um, you know, Zay Flowers gets his first touchdown. I, I just think that like, you know, putting more of that together consistently is what the Ravens are probably going to need. Like, I, they've played a lot of... They're, they're red zone defense, 21st in the league. So, hey, here we go. We got whole, a good matchup. Red zone, go, it all comes back to the red zone. Yeah. I, I think that, like, yeah, what, what, is your, what is your sense on, the, on, like, what the score looks like for this game? Because, well, we all know this is going to come down to Justin Tucker versus the Lions, right? Well, that's the thing. Him. Like, 2013, he had six field goals, including the 61-yarder to beat him in that game. Yep. And then 2021, it was it was the 66-yarder to beat him. Yeah. So, it's Lions not in, fans it's are not like, in Detroit, but... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Still, it still applies. Lions fans are like, I don't want to see Justin Tucker even suit up in this game. <laughs> It's probably going to come down to him. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to guess. I mean, I think it's going to be a close game. I think this is going to be a really good game, uh, close game. And sure, yeah, 
I'll go for Justin Tucker for the walk off. Oh, how long? How how long? How Ooh, how long? You're right. <laughs> yeah, before you ju- Take, jump ahead. Deep breath. Deep breth. Um, and I before I get I I'll go, go to the walk off 55 yarder. Okay, it's not a 60 yarder. Okay, all right. 55 if, yard- if it was in Detroit, we're talking 60 plus. Ah. 55 is is still it's not a chip shot. No, not a chip shot. All right. Uh, before we wrap up here, yep. okay. Uh, we got an email. We we got a ton of emails from listeners who were either at the pub last week in London or just watched and listened yeah. to the episode. Uh, we love those emails. We really appreciate it. We've said it before, but it was awesome to do that. Incredible experience, just meeting people from literally all across the world who have been listening or watching the podcast for years. I love that. It was fun. Oh, it was so much fun. It was great. And so anybody that was there or emailed us, thank you so much. We really do appreciate that. Um, you can always email us at lounge at ravens.nfl.net. We got an email here uh, from Ashley who said, said that she she loved everything we were able to do in London. She was not there, but she loved just watching it and taking it all in. And she said her favorite thing was the reaction from the of the win from the back of the team bus. <laughs> she, <laughs> I don't get used to that. <laughs> That's a little. It was a little bit awkward. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> when you have 50 other back, people yes. on the bus and you're just it's totally silent. And you're shouting in the back. <laughs> yeah, a little bit strange. <laughs> yeah, but you know. So don't get used to that, but I, I'm glad that we could provide some entertainment for you, Ashley. Um, she said she, her question here is, does this team make a trade before the deadline? Right. We've just become accustomed to the deadline trades around well, Eric here. Eric Tacosta's done it three out of his four years as general manager, right? Marcus Peters, Yannick Ngakwe, and then he took a year off, and then Roquan Smith. Yeah. So uh, so I'll never bet against Eric making a deadline deal. I, I Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that like they, they don't have a lot of salary cap space, so that's a, a little bit of an impediment. Um, but like they obviously have a team that is a contender, I think, to win it all. I, I, yeah, like 100%. they're a win now mode. They're a hundred percent, and like, uh, so yeah, I, I would never bet against Eric making a trade. The two positions I would look at that I think are most likely would be a pass rusher. You can never have enough. It's kind of Yanni mode you know the Ravens have really been relying on this um pass rush by a a variety of different sources Mm -hmm. right like we said 11 different guys with a one sack with at least one sack that's the most in the NFL and that's awesome that's great I'm not gonna pass up a stud though like you know you were like well they don't really have that stud 10 plus sack guy out on the edge if there's one available (laughs) at the right (laughs) price sign me up I'll take one Uh I'm not going to turn them down like think of what Mike McDonald and and this defense all of them together can do with that guy Mm -hmm. right and and you know even you have Jadavion Clowney Kyle Van Noy they've been kind of carrying especially Clowney a a pretty heavy load here early in the season those are two veteran guys that I think you want to manage their snaps as the course over the course of the season, right? Now, Odafe is coming back. I think that's a big deal. It's a huge boost. He was playing really well week one against the Texans. I'm excited about what he brings. David Ajabo is a little bit more of a question mark at this point. When is he going to come back? He, you know, John Harbaugh, and he said he is going to try to come back from the ankle and knee, but what? When is that? How much can you count on? You know, is he how soon is he 100%? So, like, there's still some lingering things there. And I think adding another body to that room, another not just a body, but a, a playmaker, uh-huh. would be a pretty nice addition. Yeah. I, I get that. Like, you know, it would be nice if you can get a, a stud pass rusher. Like, that's one of the most premier, premier yep. positions in the NFL. So, if you have that opportunity, it's tough to turn that down. However, I like. I, and I agree with like the load management thing with Clowney and Kyle Van Noy, mm-hmm. but like y- you're getting Adafi Owe back, you're you're getting David Ajabo back eventually. Like those are the guys. Like though that's yeah. that's your midseason acquisition in a lot of ways. There. Sure, that and those are two high draft picks who the Ravens have a lot of faith in. Yep. And so you, I would think that like if you bring in somebody else, that kind of limits the opportunities for them assuming they get back and they're fully healthy mm-hmm. so that's the one thing that i'm like would they make that move knowing that you got these guys Adafi back. coming back and you got a job right around the corner you hope certainly yeah i mean it, it's a luxury yeah i don't think it's something that they have to have right and thus i don't think it's something that like the ravens have to spend a, a premium to go get but like it'd be a nice luxury it'd be a really nice luxury mm-hmm. uh you know you're already tied for the league lead and in sacks with 24. That's the funny thing is like, go get pass rushers. Like, you have the most sacks in the league. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. But I'm not going to turn them down. Well, what was the other position? Running back would be the one. That, that That was the one that I was wondering about. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, we talked to Justice last week, friend of the lounge, like, he's running well. Gus is running well. It's, it's been good. You know, another game changer in that backfield kind of, uh, Mm -hmm. 
you know, a playmaker game changer kind of guy could take him to another level. And the other, the other thing I think of is, you know, it, it's kind of a buyer's market at running back right now, right? You've seen the values come down. Does it, how does it take a lot to pry a really good one from another team who might not be wanting to spend the big money on them, yeah. you know, to, to get either a rental or maybe, you know, the other thing is the Ravens, you look ahead to next season, they don't have a running, the only running backs under contract are Justice Hill and Keith Mitchell. Yeah. Beyond this year, J.K. Dobbins is going to be a free agent. Gus Edwards is is poised to be a free agent, and so sure, maybe it's a maybe it's a, a rental, or maybe you get to the end of that and say, hey, we're going to work out a deal with this guy, and still in in potentially a, a buyer's market where you're like, we can get this guy at a, at a, a a cost that we don't think is that prohibitive. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, this is probably the extreme example. You saw the impact that Christian McCaffrey made on the 49ers last year. Yeah, totally. He's probably the best running back in the game. (laughs) So, like, it's hard to compare, you know, there. Right. And uh, he's not available, you know. So, (laughs) so like, but but I do think that that could be a spot. I mean, the Ravens even did that, you know, this was, this was, not anywhere close to that level. Several years ago, they brought in like Ty Montgomery right right around the, the trade deadline. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, going back, got to check the notes there. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, so that was a, um, you know, th- I think they traded like a sixth or seventh round pick for him mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, year. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so they, they brought some depth in, you know, another quality player to that yeah. mix. Maybe it's that approach rather than like the Christian McCaffrey type yeah. approach. I just think that, you know, J.K. Dobbins got injured in week one, and we've all kind of lost focus of, like, that was a big-time playmaker that got eliminated from this offense, Yeah, right? And, like, to to get another guy of that kind of caliber on this offense, I think, could take the offense to another level. An offense that, you know, like we said, has been kind of inconsistent. Like, uh-huh. if you're, you know, you talk about pass rusher being a luxury on one of the best defenses in the league that's tied for the league leading sacks. Well, the offense is not. You know, uh-huh. it, it, it could use a little help. And so maybe that's the piece that Eric Tacasa looks at and says, I let's let's kind of lean into this ground game a little bit more. Let's let's give it another weapon and to kind of try to get this offense to that next level because we see the potential there. It can be, I think, a top tier offense. Just ha- hasn't gotten there yet. Yeah. Well the one thing we know for sure is that Tacasa will turn over every stone. For sure. So if there's a trade to be had He'll make it. Yep. But before we get to that point, trade deadline is still, what, two weeks away? Yes. Okay, before that point, we're going to go get a bear! <laughs> oh, bear! Lions roar! Win! Let's go! 